Welcome to Stories and Stretches. I know some of you have come here to the North Branch Library to join me for this before. And if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Sheila, and you can call me Miss Sheila or Mrs. B, because my last name's Brockmeyer, or Mrs. Brockmeyer, whatever works for you. So today, we're going to do a few yoga warm-ups. And then I'm going to read you a really wonderful book. We'll do some yoga poses, and then I will explain our craft to you, and we will do a calm down closing. So the way we normally start our class is we a song called Bend and Stretch. So for each, we're going to do it three different times, and we're going to bend and we're going to stretch and then we're going to twist and then go the other way and turn. So make a big rainbow with our hands and bring it down to our hands in front of us because we'll, and when we're doing this part we say this is yoga and yoga means union so we're putting our right side and our left side together. All right, let's give it a try. Let's start with our legs out in front and bend and stretch, bend and stretch, twist and turn, twist and turn. This is yoga, this is yoga, om sweet om. Om, sweet, om. Now let's do it with our legs crossed and we'll stretch, we'll reach, we'll stretch this way, reaching forward. So bend and stretch, bend and stretch, twist and turn, twist and turn. This is yoga, this is yoga, om, sweet. Om, om, sweet, om. Now we're gonna get a little tricky. We're gonna go up on our knees, and this you'll have to keep your balance a little bit. So we're gonna put one leg out, and we'll go bend and stretch, bend and stretch, twist and turn, twist and turn. This is yoga, this is yoga, om sweet om. One more time on the other side. Remember in yoga, whatever we do on one side, we need to do on the other. So bend and stretch, bend and stretch, twist and turn, twist and turn. This is yoga, this is yoga, om sweet om. Now, you might wonder what in the world is she saying? It sounds sort of like she's saying home, but I'm not, I'm saying om, O-M. And the reason we say om is om is a sound that people use in meditation. So just imagine if you could stand on top of the highest mountain, and around here you might be able to do this, to stand up on a very high mountain, and you're all alone and you're listening to the sounds of the wind and the animals, or maybe it's just really quiet, but the earth still has a sound because everything vibrates. And so when we chant Om, Om, we are adding our sounds and our energy and we're connecting with the whole universe. Now, how does Om make you feel? Let's try it. Let's, we're gonna really hold out the mm part so we're gonna start slow. Oh, does it make you feel silly? Sometimes it makes me giggle because it tickles my lips, but oh, so 
sometimes it really helps me calm down because when we're saying that, when we're doing this chanting, the sound OM, it helps our mind get clear so we can calm down. And it's part of OM. We have to breathe to make that sound and your breath moving in your body gives you life and energy and strength and serenity. So now I am going to read a wonderful story to you and it has a character who is very much into sharing about strength and serenity. It's called Nana Akua Goes to School. And Nana Akua Goes to School. The story was written by Trisha Elam Walker, and the pictures were drawn by April Harrison. And this book was published by Shorts, Schwartz, and Wade Books. So, I want you to look at this cover. Do you notice that the grandmother has a very colorful scarf on her head? She dresses a little differently than a lot of moms and grandmothers around here. So we're going to find out why. It's circle time, Zora's favorite time of the day. She scoots to a spot next to Theodore, crisscrosses her legs on the rainbow-shaped rug. Ready, set, Mr. Dawson says, looking at the children over his glasses. You bet, they respond and quiet right down. Next Monday is a very important day, Mr. Dawson continues. Each of you will bring your grandparents to school so they can share what makes them special. And what's special about our grandparents and our parents also helps make us special too. Yay, Grandparents Day, shouts Alejo without raising his hand. My abuelo is the best fisherman in the world. He can explain how to catch the biggest fish. Bisu thrusts both her hands up and says, my Mimi is the best dentist in the world. She can bring everyone a toothbrush. All the children chime in, their voices leaping over each other to tell what's best about their grandparents. Inside voices, please, says Mr. Dawson. What does yours do? Theodore whispers to Zora, but Zora just shrugs. When Zora's papa brings her home from school, Nana Akua, her favorite person in the whole universe, is peeling potatoes for dinner. Although Nana's feet barely even reach the floor, she seems as tall as the giant playground slide. Maybe that's because she's filled to the brim with stories about growing up in West Africa, where people carve statues out of wood, trees drip with mangoes, and crayon-colored outdoor markets sell everything you can imagine. Nana puts down the peeler and gives Zora one of her big hugs, the kind that wrap around you like a sweater Grandparents' Day is next week, she says. Maybe you can help me decide what to talk about. Zora just stares at the floor. Zora's mommy knows about Grandparents' Day, too. Her smile is bright as a sunbeam. How about if Papa plays the djembe drum while Nana talks to your classmates, she suggests, coming over to help Nana. Zora frowns and thinks about the last time she and Nana went to the park. Nana pushed her high to the sky on the swings and Zora was almost flying. 
But on the way home, a little boy pointed at Nana and Zora heard him say to his mother, that lady looks scary. And the very next day, a server in the little tea house stared so hard at Nana, she forgot to bring them their sugar cookies with their tea. This is because Nana Akua looks different. When she was young, her parents followed an old African tradition. They put marks on her face to show which tribal family she belongs to and to represent beauty and confidence. And those marks never wash off and never go away. Zora looks at her Nana, holding back the tears that wait in the corners of her eyes. Nana Akua puts down her potato, takes Zora's hand and says, my precious girl, why such a sad face? It feels hard to explain, but Zora wants to try. She swallows and takes a deep breath. What if someone at my school laughs at you or acts mean, she asks quietly. Nana Akua thinks for a few minutes. I have an idea, she says, and she puts Zora's arm through hers. Together they walk down the hall to Zora's room. Nana points to the bed. How about if we bring your favorite quilt to class? These quilt patterns come from another long ago tradition. And even though they're not exactly the same as the marks on my face, they can help explain them. What do you think? Zora traces some of the designs she loves with her fingers. When Nana Akura, Akua first made the quilt for Zora, she explained that the patterns were Adinkra symbols of the Akan people of Ghana. The symbols represent more than 50 important qualities like wisdom and creativity. Zora wishes the marks were only on the quilt and not on Nana Akua's face. Still, she says, okay, we can bring it. On Grandparents' Day, Zora wears one of her African dresses sewn by Nana, and Nana Akua looks especially regal in her bright patterned kaba with matching skirt and head wrap. There are lots of oohs and ahs when they arrive. The class is, classroom is decorated with a rainbow of balloons that float up to the ceiling. There are large welcome signs made with colored markers. You see them right here, welcome. And over here again, welcome. A tall chair is on the rug for the grandparents to sit in when they speak. First is Alejo's abuela, who passes around photos of the biggest bluefish he ever caught. Next, Bisous Mimi shows the class a video called Mr. Cavity and the Magic Toothbrush. So if you use your magic toothbrush, you will never know Mr. Cavity. <laughs> and Lester's grandparents, who ran a barber shop for many years, hold up clippers. Anyone need a haircut? They ask, laughing. Finally, it's Nana Akua's turn. She sits in the special grandparents chair with Zora next to her. Zora clutches her quilt tightly and her voice shakes when she gives her introduction. This is my Nana Akua. She is from Ghana, a country in West Africa. So if you look at a globe or a map, you will see that Africa is a big continent all the way across the Atlantic Ocean from us. And there are many, many countries and 
Ghana as one country on the west side of Africa. Nana Akora squeezes Zora's shoulder and starts talking. Hello, children. I'm sure you noticed these marks on my face. Has anyone ever seen anything like them before? No, said all the children. These marks were gifts from my parents who were happy and proud that I was born. She continues, I am likewise proud to wear them. Most parents in Ghana do not celebrate this way anymore, but it was once an important tradition. Zora watches her eyes wide as cups as Nana Akua walks slowly around the circle so everyone can see her face up close. It's interesting, Nana says, that in this country, I often notice people who put tattoos on their body, tattoos that have a special meaning. Yours are way better than tattoos, Theodore says, because they grew up with you. Nana Akua smiles. Why, thank you, young man, she says. And I brought some special makeup so that each of you can have a beautiful African symbol on your face, the kind you can wash off. My expert helper will hold up her quilt, which shows some symbols you can choose from. So sometimes when people get tattoos, they're a symbol that's of something that's very special to them. So maybe I have friends who have tattoos that show off that they're Irish, or I have a friend who has a wolf paw tattoo on her leg because she really cares about the wolves. The other students look at Zora expectantly. She unfolds the quilt with care. Today I'm going to choose the the Bessie Saka symbol. It looks like a flower and my Nana told me it stands for power and unity. So see, all these different shapes have special meanings. Nana Akua paints the symbol onto Zora's cheek in gold while Zora holds very still. The other children clap when it's done. Come and choose your favorite symbol, Zora says to them. So, Alejo, who wants to be a beatboxer, points to the symbol that he thinks looks like a keyboard. Nana Akua tells him it means high quality and excellence. Bisu wants to be a veterinarian, so she picks the Denkyum symbol, which is shaped like a crocodile, one of her favorite animals. It stands for cleverness. Peter and Inez decide on the Adwo symbol, which looks like the inside of a sliced apple with two identical halves. Twins like us, Peter says. Nana says the symbol means peace and quiet. Like mommy and daddy say, we never give them, Inez shouts. Nana Akua paints and paints until every child has their own designs. The other grandparents choose symbols for themselves too. See everyone's faces? They all have a different symbol on them. Zura's face glows as she watches Nana Akua fold up the quilt to go home. And this time it's Zora who gives her a very special, not like anything else, anyone else's Nana, one of those big hugs, the kind that wraps around you like a sweater. So maybe you might want to do that, give yourself a big hug. I'm doing that because holding up that book made my arm and shoulder a little bit tired. So, you know, 
um, Zura, the little girl, was kind of worried that people might laugh because her grandmother looks different than many people. And sometimes this might happen to you. Maybe you might get glasses or you might get braces and kids might laugh or tease. But, hmm, I wonder what you could do. Maybe if you tell kids, you know what, these shiny braces, someday I'm gonna have the most beautiful straight teeth. So, I don't mind. Or maybe like with your glasses, you might say, yeah, they look a little funny, but they help me see, so they're like having a superpower. All right, speaking of superpowers, let's do some yoga. I'll quickly show you the ones we're, poses we're going to do. We're going to do warrior pose, I am strong. We're going to do tree pose, I am kind. We're going to do chair pose, I am brave. We're going to do down dog. I am friendly. You guys all know I have a very friendly dog. And then we're going to do hero pose. I am wise. All right, so let's stand up and we're going to try those poses. We're going to try them once. Oh, goodness, my legs got a little creaky sitting down all that time. We're going to try them once on each side, and then we're gonna try them going a little faster and then a little slower. Are you ready? So we're gonna put one foot in front, one foot back, arms out, reaching to the sides of the room. Warrior pose, I am strong. And now we're gonna step forward, pick up one foot, and do tree pose and say, I am kind. And we're going to put both feet down, sit back, reach for the sky. I am brave. See, we have our heart open here. I am brave. We're going to reach down, step our feet back, put our backside up in the air. I am friendly. You can even wiggle like a dog. And then we're going to kneel down and say, I am wise. Let's try that on the other side. So use the opposite foot to step back. Warrior, I am strong. Step forward to tree pose. I am kind. And then sit back to chair pose. I am brave. And we'll step back to down dog. I am friendly. And down to hero. I am wise. All right, let's do those three more times. We'll do it normal, and then we'll do it kind of fast, and then we'll do it slow and calm. You ready? I am strong. This time, pick your whoops. <laughs> this, it's hard to talk and do yoga. This time, see if you can reach your branches overhead. I am kind. I am brave. I am friendly. I am wise. Other side. I am strong. I am kind. I am brave. I am friendly. I am wise. Let's do it nice and slowly. I am brave. Whoops, nope. I am strong. Warrior, silly me. Let's try that to the other side. I am strong. Let's do true to both sides. I am kind. Reach up. I am kind, sit back, I am brave, I am friendly, I am wise. Great job. That was beautiful. All right, so I have a craft for you. Maybe some of you picked it up on Saturday. Or you can come to the library, have your mom or dad 
give us a call and say, could you please put a craft out for, a yoga craft <laughs> out for whoever you are, and we'll put it out in the box, in the um, curbside pickup box. So you're going to have a page that has all these symbols, just like Nana Akua painted on the kids' faces. So here's one that says, I can't read upside down. <laughs> um, let's see, here's one that's really cool. It looks almost like a four leaf clover, and it's called Miyame Dua or tree of God, and it means recognizing presence and protection. And there's another one with lots of swirls in it, and it stands for humility with strength. So whatever designs you like, you can cut them out, and you can color them if you'd like. I used marker to add some color and they are going to go on the outside of your frame. And on the inside of your frame, it's going to be a weaving, a paper weaving that you will make. I thought weaving was sort of like a quilt. So there are, in your bags, there is a website that shows you directions but there's a green paper in here and it already has slits cut. So you'll just put one of the red or yellow slits and go under and over, under, over. And then with the yellow or the next color, do just the opposite, over, under, over, under. All right, and then you'll glue it onto your mat and you will have a beautiful quilt with a a dinkra symbol on it. All right, so we are going to just do a few breaths to calm down and relax. Huh. I'm a little out of breath after um, doing yoga poses and talking and trying to do them quickly. <laughs> So put one hand on your chest, one hand on your stomach, and hopefully you're going to feel both your chest and your tummy expand a little bit, and then pull in when you exhale. So we'll inhale and exhale. Now, sometimes in exercise, I blow out through my mouth, but in yoga, usually we just try to breathe through our nose. Let's try that again. And if, I know some of you do yoga at your school, so you may already be really good at this. This time, let's do our breath. We're gonna inhale four, hold it for four, exhale four, and then be quiet. Just calm and quiet for four. Are you ready? Inhale, one, two, three, four, and hold it. One, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, and hold it calm and quiet. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. And when we are all together with class, we end with peace begins with me. Because even though you're kids, you are still important and you have a role to play in helping our world be kind and peaceful. So we're going to start with our fingers up and touch them. Peace begins with me. We're gonna bring them down a little bit. Peace begins with me. And a little bit lower. Peace begins with me. Rest your hands on your legs. Peace begins with me. 
and we're going to bow and say namaste, which means the light and the goodness in me honor the light and the goodness in you. Thank you so much for coming to hear this wonderful book and for doing some yoga poses with me. And I look forward to doing this again with you maybe in January or February. Thank you. Bye-bye.